Whoa, what's up you guys? <laughs> Christy and I just came out of hibernation because that's what's been going on. A lot of nothing. Rain, winter, cold weather, nastiness. So Christy and I, we are starting off 2019 with some of these hot tutorials. We know a lot of you guys have been going to boat shows, some seminars, but today we're gonna bring y'all our own One Fish, Two Fish seminar series. That's right, babe. You guys, we're just coming out of hibernation, y'all and us, and we are super stoked. We're gonna be bringing you guys some really awesome, hopefully awesome, just key kind of inshore stuff, how to get on the red drum, because that is one of our favorite species to catch. Y'all have been hitting us up a ton, so we are about to answer a lot of y'all's questions and hopefully get you guys on some nice red drum in the next couple weeks. That's right, so let's get on it. This is tutorial, how to catch redfish in the winter to spring transition. That's so right. here we go. It's been way too long since Christy and I have done one of these tutorials. So it feels like, again, Christy and I, we are like coming out of hibernation, but it's awesome because we are super stoked on the slowly increasing air and water temperatures getting closer to spring and summer each day. So with that comes these redfish are, you know, getting more and more active as the temperature rises. And something that I want y'all to kind of think about is redfish and fish are cold blooded animals so in the winter time their metabolism is super slow and they're not really eating as much as that water temperature starts to increase then their feeding is going to increase as well because they're going to be more active and you know the fish are going to be focused on getting larger and preparing for spawn in the summer and as the water temperatures warm first of all let's just talk about fish are motivated by three things feeding comfort and spawning pretty much in that order so since these redfish are not spawning in the winter time in the winter and going into springtime these fish are really going to be motivated by food where their forage is where the bait is and also comfort um, comfort is really going to be kind of coming into play more in the winter time as the water temperature starts to slowly increase then the redfish are going to be you know again more motivated by where the bait is but in the winter time you know, redfish have to be very careful about getting into areas that, you know, they could die because the water temperature, you know, gets too low. Okay, so in the colder states like Virginia, North Carolina, and parts of South Carolina, the redfish are really going to be motivated in the winter more of where that water temperature is going to be warmer or warmest. So that's going to be uh, in Virginia, a lot of our redfish, actually the puppy drum will kind of winter right off the beach where the water temperature is a little bit more consistent. It doesn't dip into the 30s. You know, the water temperature kind of stays in that mid 40s to 50 degree temperature range. Once you get into kind of Moorhead City South, you know, into South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, then those redfish are really gonna be pushing all the way up the puppy drum are gonna be pushing all the way up into some of those creeks and shallows. And again, they're just gonna be focused on finding where that water is warmest. So that's why those muddy bottoms in really, really shallow areas are gonna hold those redfish because those mud bottoms are gonna be warmed by the sun. So that is very true. However, one of the things that we also wanna focus on in the winter and also in the spring transition is consistency and water temperatures. So some of the areas that Christy and I look for are actually gonna be um, like these flats that the fish might come up to if you have like a warmer than average day or a sunny day. But some of those fish are also gonna be in some deeper holes and also in some of like adjacent to those flats. So these fish are gonna look for areas where they can find access to both the bait and that warmer water. So that's kind of the main premise that we want to talk about, you know, from the winter and going into that spring transition. Winter time, these redfish, they group up, they school up. Some of them, they push out into the ocean and then others, like if you're, uh, I'd say South Carolina, South, you know, to Florida and across the Gulf and down to Texas, you know, those redfish, they're gonna push up really far up into shallow, shallow creeks. 
That's where some of the mud minnows are gonna be up there in those shallow areas, but also the warmer water. So if you can just keep those two main things in mind in the winter time of where's the water warmest and where's there gonna be access to bait. So an area that Christy and I are gonna really look for and target could be a flat that's adjacent to a channel that's gonna have some current. So some of those fish on an outgoing tide, they might be in those deeper holes, you know, 10, 15, even 20 feet next to a dock or, you know, at a point that has structure that's gonna be adjacent to those shallow flats, those creeks, those marsh areas that some of those bait fish are gonna be flushed out of with that outgoing tide. So that's kind of the basic premise that we wanna talk about today is first where to locate these redfish, how they're thinking, um, and with that, Christy's gonna to talk to y'all with some more in-depth information. One thing I'm gonna be talking to you guys about is what type of artificial baits to use when you're fishing for these red drum. So first of all, uh, you guys really wanna be matching the hatch. A lot of these drum are feeding on mud minnows, so I would definitely recommend using the four inch Berkeley Gulp. Um, these are definitely good. Again, just matching the hatch, so whatever these red drum are feeding on. For all of our Florida people, think about using, um, my other go-to is kinda of just the Z-Man shrimp. Uh, these are great, you guys really wanna just be targeting what they are feeding on. Um, with that said, um, when talking about jig heads, these are just a gotcha jig head, definitely recommend an eighth ounce jig head because these drum, um, they are cold blooded so they're going to be eating and feeding a lot less than normal and their metabolism rate is a lot slower so they're not going to be giving you that reaction bite and that reaction strike like they would in the middle of summer. So the eighth ounce is perfect. It's all about the fall rate. Um, and so you really want to, you know, present it in front of the red drum, give it enough time kind of in their family room. If you guys are, you know, fishing where you think that the red drum are in those deeper sloughs, definitely up it just a little bit to a quarter ounce. I think jig head should do it um, just enough to really get it down to those deep sloughs. When you guys are using, um, any of these artificial baits, scent is key. Uh, so whether you guys are using shrimp or Manhattan, it doesn't really matter. Also, um, the bite is gonna be a lot like a flounder bite. You're gonna have to learn how to finesse that bait and not pull it right out of its mouth. Um, those red drum are not really aggressive during this time, during this transition period. Key thing here, you guys, a uh, little takeaway, you guys wanna fish it low and slow, so make sure whatever jig head that you're using that you're always making contact with the bottom, those are, that's where, gonna be, that's where those red fish are gonna be hanging out, schooled up uh, in that deeper slough, so Pick your jig head wisely. Uh, make sure it's really making contact at the bottom and definitely use some scent. All right, y'all. So just a few more tips and tricks for redfish in you know this February, March, April, and even into May time period You know to think about is a lot of these redfish, generally speaking, they're gonna be schooling up. So if you catch one, then either put your power pole down, try not to spook them, try not to be too loud, and make sure that you stay where you're at and make make a decent amount of casts. You're going to be really looking for, you know, again, just a combination of where are you seeing bait? Where are you seeing anything? Are you seeing any uh, mullet? Are you seeing any minnows, any, you know, shrimp popping if you're down south? And, you know, if you see those nervous bait, just like anywhere else, that's where you want to focus. But again, generally speaking, these redfish, they're going to be the puppy drum. They're going to be up shallow. They're going to be, um, you know, in those areas where, you know, that water temperature is going to be warmest as possible. But also some of those redfish, they are going to be in some of those deeper holes. So we always want to be thinking about structure, um, you know, oyster bars. Oyster bars is an all year round structure that's always gonna be productive. So whether it is summer, fall, or winter, those redfish are gonna adhere to some of those oyster bars. In the winter time, might be, you know, a little bit more of those dark mud flats that are gonna hold the heat because that's what's gonna, you know, make that water temperature just a little bit warmer. I was talking to a guide also who likes to fish some of those jet docks that are black and they're plastic and they hold heat and just around those jet docks he said that you know he'll see schools of 50 to 70 redfish just because that water temperature is two to three degrees warmer and that makes a huge difference so those are some things that you want to think about again like what christy was saying 
you know, downsizing on your bait. Um, you want to fish slower. Um, you also want to, you know, focus on areas where the redfish can move and have access to warmer water if there is that warmer day and, you know, the more consistent water temperatures that could be uh, that deeper hole that's like off of an intercoastal waterway or even just a lot of beach anglers, you know, target uh, redfish in the wintertime uh, because those puppy drum are going to be just right off of the beach as well certain times of the year. All right, y'all. So in the colder states like Virginia and North Carolina, we start to get our redfish really about this time of year, depending on the temperatures that we've had of the winter. So this winter, 2019, we've had a little bit more mild winter, uh, knock on wood so far. So hopefully we're actually already seeing some of our redfish starting to push in. And uh, so those redfish are kind of slowly waking up from the winter lull and they're pushing into our intercoastal waterways. And um, you know, so Christy and I are super excited to get out there. If you're in, you know, South Carolina, South Georgia, Florida, across through the Gulf States, then you guys are blessed with the year round redfish fishery. So, um, you know, those are areas where, you know, down in South Carolina and across to the Gulf Coast, one of the other things that you want to think about is the redfish are going to be schooling up in areas where they can stay clear of dolphins because dolphins are actually one of the main predators of redfish. So just the fun fact there for you, uh, but that's why the redfish will also push up as shallow as they can get to in some of these marsh ponds and marsh areas because A, some of their bait and their forage is up there, but also um, almost just as important, uh, they're out of the way of dolphins being up, um, you know, being able to uh, eat them. So anyways, you know, those are some of the things just to keep in mind during this time of year. Again, just kind of scaling down on your baits. Um, Chrissy's gonna talk to y'all real quick just about some of the live bait that y'all might wanna be using and thinking about this time of year because live bait is also something that a lot of the top guides will fish with because these fish, they're just so lethargic and sometimes you can throw artificials at them all day but live bait sometimes is what's gonna get the job done. Jeff and I know a ton of um, top fishing guides who actually love to use live bait. Um, Jeff and I always prefer um, artificial, but live bait is an awesome way to go if you guys are just looking to get on some red drum. Um, so when you guys are getting out there, think about using a Carolina rig with a one or two aught circle hook. It's gonna look just like that. Um, and you're gonna be thinking of using a smaller, more stout of a hook because um, you guys are going to probably be um, rigging these up with um, mud minnows, gudgeons, or little chunks of fresh blue crab. I think if I was a red drum, that's probably the um, what I would go after is just a fresh chunk of blue crab because their scent is like crazy. They go crazy after it. So um, if you guys are just looking to get hooked up to a nice size, um, I don't know puppy drum or slot drum or whatever, that's definitely what I would use with that hook. All right, y'all. So hopefully <laughs> this video helped y'all out in these cooler kind of winter and spring transition months. Um, sometimes people say this can be a tricky time to catch redfish, but it's not. You just gotta get up off your butt and you just gotta go catch some fish. That's what Kirsty and I are about to do. Yeah, that's right, babe. Uh, seriously, y'all, drop us a line below. Let us know what you guys thought of our vid, and we're going to be pumping way more of these out for you guys. Get you guys on some nice redfish. That's right, y'all. All right? <laughs> Peace out.